Hey y'all, DW here. Hey, today what I want to do for y'all is I want to make a real simple homemade beet loaf. And uh, we're going to smoke it on the grill today. So I want to show you how we're going to do that. I'll show you all the ingredients we got here and prepare it and get it out on the grill. Now, you can do this on the, in the oven. So if you want to do it that way, that's fine. But uh, I'm going to show you what we got to work with here. Come on over here. What we got right down here, uh, we got a little over three and a quarter pounds of uh, ground beef here. It's 80-20. That's the best uh, for a meatloaf. Uh, you could use anywhere from three, three and a half pounds of meat on this. I'm just using beef. You could even mix pork with it uh, or veal. But we're just doing beef. And we're going to make it simple today. And uh, maybe some other time I'll do a deluxe uh, meatloaf for you. And of course put some black pepper and salt on there. And uh, we've got some other spices here. Uh, we're going to use a cup of this uh, cheese here. Uh, Colby and Monterey Jack mix. We've got a couple eggs there. Uh, use a little milk too. We're only going to use two eggs now. You don't really need to use any more of that. If you use more than one or two eggs, it just changes the texture of your meatloaf. And we got a red onion here. You could use a regular onion. Um, any sweet onion I like. Um, bell pepper. got an orange one here. I like red. They, they didn't have red, so I use an orange. Um, I'm going to use some parsley flakes. And Worcester sour sauce in the mix. Uh, some bread crumbs for your binder. And there's some more cheese I'm going to mix in with the other cheese. The, the Parmesan cheese, I'm going to use some of that. And I'm going to use some Riley Smoky Bowl um, barbecue rub in with the meat. And I'm going to use it on the outside there. So, uh, also, yeah, use a little bit of granulated garlic. You can use uh, fresh garlic. Use about three cloves of garlic. Chop it up real good, and you'll be fine. But here's what we got to work with. And I'll show you how we're going to mix all that together there. All right? All right. I got that three and a quarter pounds of uh, ground chuck there, 80-20 in there. And uh, we're going to add everything we need. I uh, also forgot what to tell you. Use a half a cup of your favorite barbecue sauce. That's what we're using here today. It's some good stuff. Um... That's what I got available, so we're using it. Uh, gonna put it in there. Might as well put that in there now. There we go. It's about a half a cup. And we're gonna use some pepper, fresh ground black pepper in here. Some salt, kosher salt. I don't know how much, just about like that there. I'm going to use some parsley flakes there. You can use oregano in here too, and some a little bit of thyme wouldn't hurt. But we're going to just make this a little simple here. You could use fresh parsley too. Uh, but I like a little greenery in mine, so that well, I'm going to just use some parsley in there. Right there. Uh, here I got that onion cut up. Uh, that's not quite a full onion, about three quarter, and that's not quite a full bell pepper. I cut the ends off, the fat ends off of it, and then you use in. So we're gonna put that in there, like that there. Uh, let's see, we got the salt, pebble, and parsley. Um, here we got the Parmesan grated cheese. Put it in there. About a half a cup, a cup of that Monterey Jack cheese. Get out of there, all of you. Uh, down in there. Uh, some Worcester sour sauce. Use your favorite kind. About like that. I'll use two eggs in there. 
Tired to get the eggshells in there. Woo, that baby went downtown. Like I said, if you use more than one or two eggs, it changes the texture a little bit in it. Uh, and this is not breakfast, so we don't need it to taste like breakfast. And there's a cup, a cup of breadcrumbs. Uh, I used Italian breadcrumbs. You could use plain breadcrumbs uh, or panko crumbs or whatever kind of breadcrumbs you want. Let's see. We're going to save the ketchup and some more barbecue sauce here for the glaze at the end, too. We got the Worcester sour sauce in there. I think we got everything covered. Let me just make sure that I'll double check on that. But we got to get in here and mix that all up. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to bust it all up. Kind of mix it all up. You don't have to really mash it all together real tight. Just kind of mix it loosely. And it should go together real good there. But, uh, and get it all over the place, too. But anyhow, you get the idea. I'm going to mix that a little bit better than that there. I'm going to put some milk in there, too. About a third a cup of milk. That should work. Instead of putting all them much more egg in there. That should work really good. Is it looking good there now? It should be starting to come together there a little bit. Well, we got some more breadcrumbs down in there that ain't really joined the party yet. So get them all joined up together, made it up. It'll be like a class reunion by the time we're done here. All right. All right. I'm going to mix that up just a little bit more. I'm going to work on it for about a minute at the most. And I'll show you what we're going to do with it. All right. Here's what we got right now. After I mix it up all real good there, and I'm going to put it in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes, maybe a little bit more, just long enough to get the smoker up the tent, get it going. I'm going to make a loaf out of it after I pull it back out of the fridge and show you what it looked like. Okay? I rest that meatloaf in the refrigerator for about 35, 40 minutes. I forgot to put the garlic in there. You got to put some garlic in there. So I'm going to sprinkle it on the top and then work it, work it in there. I don't know, just cover the top real good and mash it on in there. And then I'm going to use some of Riley's Smoky and Bold. Kevin Riley makes some good award-winning rubs. And we're going to sprinkle some of that on top too. Can you see over here? There you go. I don't know if you can. Uh, put it on there real good. All right, that. Like that down there. Alright. All right. Something like that. Alright. I'm going to work that in there. In there good. And I'm going to just form it with my hands into like a football or rectangle or loaf. And I'm going to put it on this tray over here. And it's going to give it room to drain. You could use your like a, one of the racks you can buy in a store and put it on your tray and do whatever you want to with it. But anyhow, let me get this formed. See I kind of formed it into a loaf down there in that pan. Hopefully it comes out okay. It'd be better if I had a... I kind of missed that there. Camera malfunction. What I did is I formed it into that log in this pot and I pulled it out with both hands very carefully and then I just kind of mashed it into shape big old dog there. Alright. That's what you want. Something to look like that. Alright. Let's get her on out to the smoking grill there and show you what we're going to do outside. Alright. Alright. We got it out to the grill here. I set my grill up as a smoker. We got the hot side fire built on one side and the cool side over here and uh, the meat's over here. So we got Air intake down here at the bottom open a little bit. This one's closed on this top. The top exhaust is over here on this side. 
and the bottom over here down here is closed. So it's it's drawing through the across the fire over the meat and out this side over here. So uh, we're using my grill as a smoker. What we're going to do is we're going to cook at 275 today. Uh, that meatloaf probably take about two and a half hours is all. Uh, it will finish at an internal temp of about 160 degrees. So that's what we're shooting for here. And I'll show you here what we got. Come on over. There, there's what we got. I put a couple hickory chips in there. Right there, royal oak hickory chips. But you really don't need much in there because you got that B and B uh, lump charcoal that I'm using. Uh, it's a uh, oak. Uh, Charcoal, it gives you a good flavor anyhow. So you don't want to over smoke it anyway. So I just threw a couple chips in there. That'd be fine. And we got our meat sitting over here. And let's get to cooking. All right. I'll let you know what it's uh, almost finished and show you the finished product. Right now I'm going to make me that uh, glaze I'm going to put on that smoked meatloaf. i probably last 15 minutes that it cooks or so. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of that historic barbecue sauce. Uh, you just kind of dump me some in there. Like that there. And I'm going to use some ketchup. Ketchup's always a good topper for uh, meatloaf. Uh, I don't like just ketchup though, but uh, we'll put a little ketchup in there here too. The sweetness and the sugar out of that, I don't know, it makes a good glaze and just putting a little bit in there with that barbecue sauce. I think that's really going to work out real good. Just stir that up. Let's see, like that there. There you go. Just something like that. So all you need just a little glaze there. Go on top there to finish that off. All right, I pulled this off the smoker grill and uh, it's at around 155 to 160, depending on where you poke it at. I got my barbecue sauce and my ketchup mix here. See right there? I'm gonna rub it on here real good. I'm gonna pour it on there right now. Going there. Yeah, that ketchup will go real good with that barbecue sauce. Kind of make it more traditional. Yeah, it'll go good on here. And I'm going to put it back on the smoker for, say, maybe 15 minutes. Probably it's all I need. And it'll finish around 165 internal temp. What do you think about that? A little good? Look good? We need to take a picture of that. That's how good that looks. Alright, now I'll rub a little bit more of that on. And I'll show you what it looks like when it's uh, caramelized. That, that will bake in there a little bit and look prettier. Alright, there you go. That's what uh, DW's meatloaf looks like when it's done. Cut her open and look at her. How about that? I'm going to cut her right in the middle here. So we can see what it looks like. Like I said, it finished around 160. Internal temp. Let's see what the smoke ring looks like and everything. Right. There. Whoa, that looks good, don't it? I'm sorry for my light, and I gotta get my lights back together here. Uh, they're not. It don't show very good. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, maybe you can see it better there. Real good there? Well, I'll tell you what, it looks yummy. Don't look all dried out. Looks pretty good. Can you see the smoke ring? See the smoke ring around the top? There. Well, that looks nice. All right, let me cut me off a piece. What do you think, brother? You like DW's uh, meatloaf there? Let's see if I can get you a closer up view.
Oh, I broke it. Oh well. Can you see there? Oh, all right. Take a bite of that. <clears throat> Look good, don't it? Oh, wow. Mm. Great texture and flavor. You taste a little bit of that smoke. Not bad. Not a whole lot. Just enough to know it's there. Yeah. Mmm. You could do this in your oven. And just the same. But you ain't going to have the same flavor, the smoke flavor to it. But it'd be good. Hmm. I like that. That meatloaf's gonna make a good dinner. I got some mashed taters over there and some corn. So that'd go real good with this. Hmm. Oh yeah. You ain't gonna get much better meatloaf than that. Wow. That barbecue sauce and that mix of ketchup is real good on the right on the edge there. And you can taste the spiciness of the barbecue uh, rub uh, from Riley's Rub. Oh, I like that. Well, I'm gonna get on off of here, feed everybody, and I'm glad to be back making some videos, and I hope to be making some more videos too. And I hope you like my video. Click on like, comment, let me know what you think. And uh, I hope to see y'all soon. Y'all take care out there. You hear? Bye-bye.